Welcome back to part two of my reaction to my video on Mount Gernar, Ancient Dwarka, The Secrets of Mount Gernar. Uh, let's go ahead and continue with this renaissance. Spectrum, where it is our angle. Oh, also, the first video I lazily recorded through my stream app. And I guess the audio is just not as good as when I do it through my actual video editing app so i'm gonna do it through the video editing app this time it just is i have to render the file afterwards so it's kind of being lazy about it but the previous reaction was pretty much intolerably low volume so i'm sorry about that i do hope people raise the volume and check it out i'm really not gonna adjust it that's just too bad at this point there's information in there that's useful, I'm sure. Things I said, for sure. <coughs> so, sorry about that. <laughs> of perception that causes variance in how a system in the universe is seen is possible through the parallels that exist across dimensions. From our spiral-armed galaxy, we can zoom in on our solar system where the sun's magnetic field and its rotation induces a current in its surroundings known as the heliospheric current sheet. In this manner, we can link the dimensions. Inward still, we can consider the oh. sun itself. A lot of times what I say is actually highly dependent on, like, uh, an underlying assumption that the person listening recognizes what I'm saying is an alternative idea that <clears throat> clearly requires arriving at. And uh, I'm pretty much just pointing to it and people have to like pursue to determine if it's valid. Like I'm, I'm really not going into depth of the true extent of why there are parallels across the dimensions where we find solar flares and sunspots basically just enough to be like yeah it's going on crossing the dimensions to our own plane of existence it is only reasonable to conclude that the earth must have the same mechanics upper atmosphere lightning known as sprites occurs above particularly intense thunderstorms near the equator rather than striking downward to the ground they project upward to the edge of the air glow of the ionosphere our earth's photosphere and through a disc structure <coughs> that forms known as l i did not look for footage of this very much there's a lot of good images of this some of them show it much more real like than a drawing but. such parallels can be made across all dimensions and thereby currents can flow in our currents fucking electric current it even has like a lightning bolt going on here like it's elves well, here it's a lightning bolt such here, parallels here can be made across all dimensions and thereby currents can f light almost like a lightning strike flow in our understanding through developed channels importantly the universe is infinity manifest as such there are ever larger and smaller systems that can stably form and be seen as particles from the largest to the smallest system that we classify black holes to photons and beyond they all mechanically function identically the difference rather is because we are composed of a specific group of particles within the infinite spectrum of particles and so our reality that we view is shaped as a function of our largest building block constituents and thus how a system is seen is dependent on the mass ratio 
of the particles of the observer to the observed system. There is nothing particularly unique about the systems that we call atoms compared to other particles except that we collectively are composed of them. Not stars, not planets, atoms. More precisely, the range of particles which we see as atoms. I didn't really describe that well. I realized I could have said it a little more clearly that <clears throat> the range of atoms is because we're made of atoms and if an observer is composed of another particle they're still going to see a range of atoms to a point where they have their own periodic table so like there's a periodic table of stars This shared viewpoint of the nature of reality, where we are vibrationally composed of the same material, puts us squarely into the same reality, where we live with one another consciously on the same plane of existence. However, when an observer is composed of another particle, they do not see themselves as composed of stars, nor planets, or any other particle, even antimatter. Instead, their perception of reality is shifted, where, for instance, what we see as black holes, they see as stars, and stars as planets. It is the relative mass ratio of the largest building block constituents of an observer to the observed system which determines how it is seen. When Earth is seen by an observer composed of sufficiently subtler particles, the relative mass ratio of their building block constituents to the emitted radiation that we see in the infrared spectrum can instead be in their visible light spectrum. In this way, Earth is a star, and as sprites are lightning strikes, while solar flares are not instantaneous, so too is time dependent on the rate at which our building block constituents function. As a result, when the Earth ruptured, it underwent radioactive decay. Not only did it project energy, but the atoms of the earth being emitted were also rapidly decaying, and when compared to current... All that shitty explanation. I mean, it wasn't shitty. It wasn't shitty. It just wasn't... It was confusing. Maybe a very short, like... To the point where people listening will assume that I'm just saying things without basis and so on. <laughs> uh, that's not the case, but that's how it appears. Current rates of radioactive decay painted a picture of the process taking millions of years to unfold. This event is not only evident on the surface of the earth, but also throughout the mantle. Under the crust are two superplumes, the African superplume and the Pacific superplume. The superplume below the Pacific Ocean is of higher density and deeper within the Earth than the African superplume. These plumes further demonstrate the energy's flow through the Earth, where the ethereal vortex applied a pressure within the Earth and the current to the opposing surface's crust caused an escape channel for building internal energy within the earth to be produced, leading to the Pacific Ocean superplume. The continent of Africa itself is of the shape of the golden ratio phi spiral. Significantly, this means that the zero point of the spiral of Earth's crust is within Africa. The spiral continued outward on Earth before it expanded 
having South America and North America conjoined to Africa, a distinct boundary was created that followed the western coast of the two continents because the spiral then continues to expand outward and encompasses all of Europe, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica, which filled in the region between Africa and this western boundary. This is why the earth ruptured along the western coastline of North America, which was cradling South America in its arm away from remaining continents. The boundaries were weak points in the structural integrity of the crust of the earth that were most susceptible to current flows I'm kind of in a weird spot right now. I need fucking help. You know, I'm just pissing people off because I need help. And I'm like, I need help. I need help. Shake people. I need fucking help. <laughs> uh, so I'm just kind of watching. I'm not reacting like the last one took me like an hour to make it this far already. <laughs> uh We'll see. Let's keep, let's go back a little. The boundaries were weak points in the structural int. This is cool that there the concept that there's boundaries to the continents just naturally adjacent to one another that were weak points where energy currents could flow towards like a a nucleus of say Africa or towards uh, some other location, such as where the Earth exploded. And so they have these grid lines. Integrity of the crust of the Earth that were most susceptible to current flows along it. That continents have the shape they do is indicative of their formation process occurring sequentially according to phi ratio growth. It is for this reason that Africa contains the nucleus of the crust of the earth. Okay, so I said se uh, forming sequentially, and this isn't quite right. It's not that it's not right. It's that what occurs is it's not like here's the nucleus and here's like the oldest material and then older or newer material, newer, 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 newer. So this would be like the newest land. It's not like that. Like Australia has Jack Hills, Australia, which is one of the oldest places on earth and Canadian shield and like down here so like what's up with that being the nucleus that doesn't really make sense and then the sequential growth doesn't really make sense but the reality is this is true it's just like when it grew it like took parts apart kind of like how the continents are now separated it separated them so that like there's a chunk of the oldest portion here. There's a chunk over here. There's a chunk over here. There's a chunk over here. There's chunks all over the place of the cratons that existed prior to the continents themselves taking shape on the pre-expansion Earth when it was in a even smaller phase before the Earth first supernova because that's what happened is the earth supernova like it's it's nucleus so here in the case of what's going on here the energy flow could have gone to the nucleus if it if it was enough energy to just go to this nucleus of africa it wouldn't have severed the entire earth instead it would have physically started to produce new material and just shoving its way in and pushing everything without severing between it it would have just maintained like a, a more 
complete like now it's segmented because it it wasn't enough energy to actually cause the the crust to react as a whole so instead it just severed the crust which took shapes like here so i paused oh my dad's cough and he's got copd is sometimes it's so bad <sighs> i wish i could fucking do something i don't fucking know guys life sucks when no one helps you it's just the truth So, what was I saying? So, if the energy could have just went into the nucleus here, I believe what would have happened is the planet would have physically underwent a planetary supernova as occurred on Venus. Venus underwent a planetary supernova. And I believe what happened is, like, and energy was focused into a region on the planet, a particle that's not like as big as the planet itself, but bigger than atoms, like an intermediary particle that is uh, part of its like grid system, but it's like main particle. If this one is able to have enough energy input into it, then maybe the whole of the crust supernovas in a way where it wouldn't look like this <laughs> but because it wasn't able to it just shoved it away and it was like a check it was like either you have enough energy to transform the nucleus passing energy or you don't and when it hit the basically the disk of the earth there's a physical layer at the equator that this energy runs into like a wall and either is absorbed into the system because it's able to get through or it's shoved away because it's not enough energy. And it looks like it was just not enough energy from this propagating wave to actually cause the crust to change. And so it just ejects it. When, but real quick, like grid lines. If we look at the side of Africa, like it it broke as if it's following energetic grid lines, like the this is anomalous otherwise, but it looks very much like it's grid lines. And this is similar to, to what occurred in South America where the energy was propagating in this direction and then suddenly it's going downward, down, down this way. Where in South, of South America it was propagating, it would have just kept going this way, but suddenly it's sent down this way. So there's a similar thing going on here where the energy just could not rip through this direction and probably like if it could it would have moved towards the nucleus but because it couldn't it just bounces it off this way following the energetic grid line though like it's not just arbitrarily moving it's following the path of least resistance through dividing the continents according to the grid line that exists there <coughs> down 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 to a point where then it severs and then this side is just severed because it was where the um, rest of the phi ratio ended up being and so Africa has a lot of like straight line sudden bumps like bumps which are suggestive of the fracturing being in a uh according to a grid of the earth.
the attack took place at Dwarka, the ether flows along the crust followed this spiral's boundary, ripping it asunder with the currents. Nearest Dwarka, the currents, <laughs> like many streams building into a river, were not able to fracture the Earth's crust until they reached the region of the Mediterranean and had enough collective current to fully split the crust along its entire depth. When the propagation of energy reached the outer edge of the phi spiral of the original nuclear... Here's another thing... It I believe there's also a phi, like this isn't the only phi spiral. It could have been another phi spiral that it went through, like here, like another one out further that maybe encapsulates this crack and then comes over this way and would have in included maybe some region of whatever was here exactly. So like, some of the energy went along this crack, I believe, and then it kind of got brought over to the more appropriate, it is according to how much energy was there, the more appropriate flow path for the energy to follow. Like it tried to go up along this one, but it just it couldn't handle it, so it had to like cut across. And then it just kind of joins in along the Mediterranean, along this phi ratio spiral specifically rather than like the next one over or one inward that could have happened like here that would have just been more in yes of the earth's shell africa it traveled along the golden spirals boundary <laughs> along energetic grid lines of the earth following the boundary inward towards the nucleus of africa when the energy reached a position near to perpendicular with the eye of the sahara the fault line abruptly jumps towards africa as if a discharge of energy into africa occurred and the energy state of the wave dropped inward towards the nucleus of the crust of the planet to a new stable level and here we i mean i think that's probably reasonable honestly but it, the reason it, i am a little like there's a lot of little jumps like here there's jumps here there's jumps everywhere like the where are all of the eye of the sahara equivalents like why is this jump the one that's producing the eye of the sahara while well, no other sudden abrupt movements in the um like there's not even uh mountains here like that's kind of anomalous there's not even like a mountain chain here Maybe it just wasn't enough energy to really push up mountains at that point. Dropped inward towards the nucleus <coughs> of the crust. This is one of those things where I'm like, this is probably what happened, but it doesn't really matter. This was another tidbit. And I can, I can recognize there's some flaws in the line of reasoning surrounding specifically that the the drops in the energy like are not always producing eyes of the Sahara. I mean, it could be argued that uh, the eye of the Sahara, like the nucleus here, was a particle, an electron of the Earth that became excited and literally exploded from the influx of energy here, causing it to be just like a, a burned out electron. <clears throat> to the point where we see it and then maybe like all these spots there's just there's not like specifically a grid point there of an electron and so because there was an electron there maybe it was most able to create that outcome i don't i don't quite know
this isn't necessarily absolute that I, what I just said here about this drop being definitively the cause of the eye of the Sahara. But I'm pretty confident. ...of the planet to a new stable level. And here we see a large increase in the temperature of the African superplume. Notably, the energy is staggered along the western coast of the country. This is suggest awkward when I call Africa a country. Oh my god. I mean it's it's arguable that I was referring to the country that I don't even know the name of where the Isle of the Sahara is. I, <laughs> but I, I was definitely talking about the continent and misspoke. Which, you know, when I live in a world that judges every single thing and, like, attacks you the moment there's a fucking mistake. Oh, my God. The fucking ramifications. You think it's a, a country? You fucking racist white American male. <laughs> I was watching a video of this guy. It's like... African kid thinks white man is a ghost. And the, and the kid's like, he's got to eat me. And then they like everyone tries to get the kid to hang out with the, to like they hold the white guy's hand and it's fucking weird. It was weird. Rather than be like, you know, this kid's got a point. White people are frightening. <laughs> like maybe we shouldn't force children to face their fears of white people by bringing them over like that. It was very strange. And then, like, all these dynamics. Like, it wasn't the parents involved. Like, dude, if this wasn't Africa, this would not be okay treatment of children. Like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Trying to make a damn YouTube video, pretty much. With Oh, this kid's crying. Oh, isn't it crazy that this kid's afraid of this white man? He's just He's just a kind white man. Like, are you sure he's not there to strip all your resources to, like, feel better in some way? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it's danger. It's, it's a valid fucking concern for people to have. Uh, you know, if all our resources are being stripped by white people. I know you're not the white person who did it, but, uh, yeah, now, let me tell you, we got some fucking problems here, so you need to get the fuck away, white people. I, I can understand that kind of reaction, honestly. So it's a little, you gotta be, maybe not forcing white people on Africa, <laughs> especially when we're ignorant fucks like me. And then the, along the western coast of the country, you know how much fucking oppression we have faced for you to not acknowledge we're more than one fucking country? You know how big of a fucking continent we are, you cunt? <laughs> oh my god. The fucking anger and hate that could happen if just this video is watched. That's the problem with even trying any of this shit where I'm like trying to tell people this is how things are. I'm a human being, well, I make mistakes. Fuck him, he said country. ...that the fault line's abrupt jump is indeed result... Ignore everything I vow of validity that I have to say and just fucking witch hunt, like, dogpile me. That's what happens. People hear one word and they just start dogpiling. Everyone be that agrees. Oh, they see the conversation happening. Oh, this person is uh, defending themselves from someone that I agree with. This can't happen. We gotta fucking join this. For this person thinks they can overpower the person I agree with when I agree with that person. How dare you have your own separate opinion and not bow down to authority? You're really not welcome in these parts. Downvote. Negative, 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 negative. Hate, 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 hate. I'll bring on the hate, baby. Bring that hate on, baby. At some point, I gotta just fucking welcome it. Thanks for the hate, guys. <laughs> fucking hate is gonna hate. And of a discharge into Africa. Then, 
when the propagating wave of energy reached a position seemingly at the same latitude as the zero point of the nucleus of Africa, the energy was perpendicularly expelled away from Africa and through North America and South America across the golden spiral. This the Earth incredible. itself contains a cold spot where the pro okay, not this, but that, that I'm not even sure that I'm not sure this is this is similar where pause this is similar though where there's a lot of cold spots. This one I can explain. I didn't. I mean, this one makes sense because of vortex. Uh, I was focused on Chicxulub. This one makes sense. <laughs> this one kind of fits in with it. Okay. This one, I mean, this kind of makes sense in a way, although it's kind of all staggered. Like it would make more more sense if it actually reached the Himalayas. It's kind of staggered. So, like, the cold spots are a little odd. I definitely do not explain them in depth. This one alone, explained, doesn't really do justice to the cold spots of the Earth. I understand that. And I did not even attempt to explain this one, but I think this might be related to the essentially the energy between the two continents because it's like the the core of the earth it's it was just more sturdy and so like maybe to fracture between these two continents here just it took like a fucking influx of energy that then inserted energy down into the mantle to produce this huge plume here while severing these two but like there's really not much going on in South America. I haven't thought much about the plumes. It's just they've they kind of matched with the the regions I was talking about. So like the rest of this stuff, I like I'm sure if I really thought about it, I could uh, come up with more explanations in these regions. This looks kind of near Yellowstone, which is kind of odd. This is so fucking huge. Like, what in the... Is this just water that, like, sat here and instead of evaporating, it it basically drained into the earth and created this, like, cold mantle spot, maybe? I don't know. Propagating ether absorbed energy in the process... This strongly suggests that the previous position of zero latitude and longitude of the Earth was the phi ratio zero point of Africa. While its position remains at zero longitude, the nucleus... I said no, people that don't really know that much about geology won't care much about what I just said. But people who do know will be like, what the fuck? While its position was the phi ratio zero point of Africa, while its position longitude. remains at zero longitude, the nucleus of Earth's crust is no longer at the equator. Longitude is arbitrary. It's historically, it has been described as arbitrary. So I find it real interesting. So longitude zero is based off of a location in England. That just was chosen seemingly at Greenwich, England is the internationally accepted as the line of zero degrees longitude or prime meridian. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Prime Meridian Greenwich. Okay, let's just bring this over here. 
See, I kind of looked around here, and this, uh, as you can see, I was looking around here like this. Just be like before I said. While its position remains at zero of longitude, I looked around to see how zero longitude was determined because it's a little it's it's kind of arbitrary if you just think about it. Like latitude makes sense because it's further up, like it it matters. But longitude could really be anywhere it seems. And yet, what I find fascinating is we organically and naturally chose the prime meridian. Whether we knew it or not, I don't know. It's possible this suggests that the people involved in these decisions are way more informed than they let on, but also, and truly, truly controlling the world, but also allowing us to, to like figure it out for ourselves. So, like, they're setting things up like this, maybe, where it just half, or it's just, like, that's the nature of reality, where, like, it's, a, it's not a disproof that the old um, location of zero longitude latitude was a nucleus, uh, as here, that was down here, and it just moved up but main, maintains zero longitude. Like, it happens where we then, without intent, choose some location along a line like that. For instance, like, like for instance, the Mount Gurnar Parakrama, where people are just circling this vortex mountain just by nature not because we, like, it's not like everyone's like we gotta circle the mountain because it was made by a vortex there's vortex energy here it's present we have to we have to acknowledge it and adhere to it now they just do it because there's vortex energy there so maybe there's the fact that the nucleus is here played a role in the prime meridian being chosen in its location subconsciously or unconsciously on a level where it wasn't intended but it is in fact remains at zero longitude where a geologist just listening to that would be like dude longitude doesn't matter we could say zero here we could say zero here we could say zero anywhere so it doesn't so what do you mean while the longitude remains at zero? You're saying it like it's significant. And I purposely said it like that. And I purposely said it knowing that motherfuckers were going to be like, bitch, that ain't how loud longitude latitude works, dude. It's just random. Longitude don't matter. We just chose a place to, because that's how it goes. We got you somewhere. Latitude, like obviously the fucking equator, but longitude, you know, whatever. Choose anywhere. <laughs> so, like, geologically thinking, like, it truly is random. But it's not random. <laughs> and it's a nuance that, like, dude, that's crazy. We fucking inadvertently are at zero longitude by, like, happenstance. I think. I don't think someone knew and guided the process. Maybe like outside of Earth, like the way God guides circumstances in, in every moment. So like me deciding to open a book and read page 42, line 7 on this day while having this thought and seeing this line and being like, ah, this thought, lead, like this combines to this other thing that if I had not done that... I would not have realized this other thing. That process occurs where, like, a song told me the theory of everything. I mean, just straight up. <laughs> Gave me the missing link. Like, that's God. That's us through layers, through a future, knowing where we're all happy and healthy and abundant and able to view and witness the beauty of creation together and see the universe in its infinite detail by being able to study these moments in time because we're so abundant of like 
we have such abundance that we don't have to like waste our time like f cycling the fucking rat race we made it so we can just like observe and marvel at the f at the beauty and intricacy and interconnectedness of everything and start to pick up on the way that things are just without conscious intent on our part. So clearly conscious intent because someone's fucking doing it and it's God. <laughs> of the earth as if the whole of the crust is in an excited energy state. Notably, I do not mention the fact that if the whole of the crust is in an excited energy state, I mean, it's, it's probably going to go to a lower energy level. So if you imagine this is the crust, this was the crust, the excited electron happens, so the whole of the crust changes. But then the electron emits, and the whole of the crust drops back down to an energy level of ground state. It's not excited, and maybe Earth is still in an excited state because Mars is significantly smaller, so I think... That when Earth goes from Venus to Mars, if you watch my Mercury, the Messenger God video, which is a follow-up to this, pretty much, in terms of Earth history. This video is about Earth history, that video is about Earth history, just more nuance, the further pack in time. Um, I basically believe that Mercury supernovas becomes Venus. That causes Venus to become earth and earth to become mars and mars to become sirius and so when mercury becomes venus by supernova it basically is in a first state like here a ground level although it's a, it's more nuanced because it's significantly bigger than mars mass more massive than mars and so on <coughs> But generally speaking, I believe that what happens from Earth to Mars is going back. And so, like, the surface, like, the oceans just, like, melt away. The crust of the oceans is just emitted somehow or collapses inward into the planet, maybe. Water is stripped away by the loss of uh, the atmosphere and the heat. <coughs> leaving behind just enough to then freeze at the poles and look like, well, Mars had water. And we can see evidence of water on its surface. Where, why, why are there no flows of water now? <coughs> but, like, maybe all that we see of Mars is, like, continental shelf of Earth that then the the oceans and the excited energy state were somehow just kind of like shoved off. Like, eh, this, like, it, it just can't hold this shell and it has to collapse inward and just gets rid of the waste of the oceans, the crust of the ocean, so that the actual surface area of the earth reduces. That's what I'm getting at, is the surface area of, the, of Mars is significantly lower than Earth. And how does it get that way? Maybe it literally is Earth is in an excited energy state. And when it drops to a normal state, it will be in a ground state where it's just physically smaller surface area. The energy flow appears even like a projectile traveling through the air according to gravity and the laws of motion where it hits a hard energetic shell at the previous equator like hit this is terrible i do believe this is worth considering this that's part of the problem with making a video like this is if someone only sees this video they're like it's fucking stupid dude well, he just said that the object just energy flowed like gravity essentially around like this this part didn't really exist so like down here 
I mean, it kind of it kind of does um, to a degree. But the, the reason I found this compelling enough to to say it is because I think maybe it is a reality. It's not necessarily has to be, but I, I honestly believe that this might be a case where there's like a sort of gravitational pull for the energy at the up here to like move back towards the the equator and maybe even once it goes past the equator to like fall down into the abyss maybe that's why all these lines down here are much more like downward flows of energy i don't, I don't know <clears throat> but this was uh, I more so just said as a thought. I wish I hadn't put it in there in some ways, but I also am glad that I said it because I think it might be... I think it's interesting. That's part of the problem with my research is like everything I say has to be so indisputable that the person I say it to must sit in silence because <laughs> they're unwilling to agree with what I'm saying. So the best I can do is to not get a rebuttal in some sense. If I'm getting rebuttals, it's because I'm, my argument's so shitty that people can casually rebut it if they consider it. Being the surface of the earth, this caused the energy to be perpendicular. I don't like that I gave two explanations for the same me mechanic. I, th I do believe both, both of the explanations are tied that there is or was an equator at that position, I believe is relevant. Indicularly expelled from the nucleus. So even if it's not following gravity, like the energy still hit an equator, like a disc at that, s at that point, which I guess is like a, a moment of checking whether or not there's some efficient energy to go into the nucleus as if the energy reaching the disk caused the proximal nucleus to eject it rather than absorb it likely this occurred because of an insufficient activation energy for the propagating wave to cause the nucleus of the Earth's crust to transform, and so the energy was expelled. Thus the energy... I believe that's true, right? That's true. It, it, it could have gone this way, and because it couldn't, it didn't have enough energy, it just expelled it. Energy traveled along the previous... This is amazing right here. Especially this portion. It is clear. Equator and to the antipode of the storm, according to. Like, how absurd is that? Thus, the energy traveled al <coughs> along the previous. This suggests strongly, though. Strongly suggests that when Africa oops, and South America ripped here, so like Africa's here. And it, the crack is coming down between North America, which is wrapping around here. The Central America is coming down here. The crack is coming down between North America and Africa. And it hits here where suddenly it's just expelled this way along an actual... So like this, this was not here is what I'm getting at. None of this shit was here. There's actually a, an edge here initially, truly, that was down further. And then when Chicxulub and Central America all shattered and with a, with torque pushing into this side of South America, it literally filled in new material here, whether which was probably continental shelf shoved in and intermixed with like oceanic crust. So this region, I wouldn't be surprised, it has a lot of uh, subtleties to it. On um, whereas over here is probably more like continental shelf. 
although there is um, the Central Atlantic Magnetic Province around here, so some of this may have new stuff, but like, besides that. And then right here is the lightning capital of the world, p perhaps, Beacon of Maracaibo, which I believe is no accident that it is in this region where all this like vortex of energy was being spun like something's up here I don't quite understand it <coughs> this equator and to the antipode of the storm so according smooth. to the curvature like the smoothness of how closely that matches with my overlay that's like on a plane so it's a little hard to match a sphere with surface truly but I mean <laughs> it really fucking fits it really does <coughs> and it's even I don't know if this matters like the way this line comes over kind of is where this goes down just about so maybe like the fact that it turned relates like it where it starts to go down relates to there somehow. I don't know. Sure. Of a Fibonacci sunflower so as to cut through the golden spiral of the Earth's crust wrapping around and creating the northern and northwestern faces of South America. I don't like my tone of voice when I'm like wrapping around and creating the northern and northwestern faces <laughs> northern <sighs> I gotta be monotone almost to like say this without having emotional um, undertones work their way in but I still managed to do it because my ego is through the fucking roof after all these discoveries like it's very hard to not just be like pff, pff, pff. <laughs> <laughs> although I know it's like you guys telling me in the future that's how I see it that's how I see it is, is it's you guys in the future speaking through your present self from a time when we are stable and truly at equilibrium and abundance and everyone's happy no one's struggling besides like more like struggle changed it's not the fucking struggle for survival it's the struggle for like thriving for truly understanding and becoming enlightened because we've en enabled one another to have an environment where we can achieve our peak potential because we give a shit about one another rather than using one another as resources to gain our personal uh, betterment by fucking stealing from one another. Like, oh, you need this resource, you know, I need resources too, so let's make an exchange. And uh, you pay me all the time and I'll just uh, make profit. <laughs> and you get this fucking service that costs me very little. Well, you know, all the times we take advantage of one another for the for our own personal gain. It's really not our personal gain because we're all we our personal person is one is all. So what are we doing? <laughs> we're literally taking advantage of ourselves, of ourself, when we take advantage of one another. Okay. When it reached the location of the rupture, the energy released along the crust from the explosive force of the earth rupturing was so vast as to rip a straight line through the earth's golden spiral at an angle of 120 degrees from the angle it was traveling. As Central America was connected to North America through the golden... This shit is so irrefutable though. Like, good luck. Like, good luck.
and ratio construction of the continents, generally speaking, obviously nuances still in the in the works and figuring out, you know, it's almost unfair when you got millions of people or however many thousand, let's say thousands of people across the century, or at least when the plate tectonics come out, like 60s, let's say 50s, since 75 years, hundreds, thousands of people, let's say 10,000 geologists, I have no idea, that have actively pursued and worked on the furthering the model of plate tectonics. So to like try to put a new model adjacent to a model that it clearly has a unfair advantage just because we thought it was true doesn't mean it was true and so it just inherently has like a hand it has it's a handicap it's kind of like bowling you know but obviously the better theory it doesn't get the handicap it's the shitty theory that gets the handicap so the theory of plate tectonics is given a nice boost of 75 years head start before the reality of the situation starts to come out that none of it's so and people are confused because they've spent so much time and energy on this model they're like well the model's evidenced I'm like yeah but guess what that same evidence can be applied to this model and better without anomalies see how there's an anomaly here 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 like so many fucking anomalies that are just casually swept under the rug while we just continue to pursue mindlessly our current interpretations as if they're valid they're just not true like the earth expanded so plate tectonics is not true it's really ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at, where I'm like, yeah, this is irrefutable. You can't fucking deny the, that the continents fit together and they fit together in a phi ratio spiral growth of the planet and they fractured according to it. I mean, every detail is fucking insane. Whereas plate tectonics is just kind of like there's plates and they move sometimes slow and steady across millions of years. So everything's just kind of set in stone here. We just get to observe it slowly now that we've evolved across millions of years. But none of this shit is so, dudes. The earth expanded thousands of years ago and painted a picture of mil hundreds of millions of years of time passing. They remained conjoined while the next layer was separated. As the earth ruptured from the ethereal vortex on one side of the planet. God, that's so good though. Like just the fact that it's got a hexagon covered up by Mariana Trench reflecting this way. Waves coming this way create the Indonesian archipelago and it starts to compile the shit up here until it just has enough shit that the waves coming in are no longer able to keep pushing in and depositing and instead just start to reflect and then they cover the, what would have been a really fucking glaring hexagon and make it so we only can see half of it so it's more subtle because that's how shit goes. Obvious evidence is covered with layers of subtleties to make it a little more confusing. So we don't we don't pick up on things until we're meant to. An equal and opposite force occurred, causing a projection of positive energy in a vortex in the opposing direction. This flowed to the surface of the earth where the storm was discharging through a channel that projected and spiraling more. energy, transforming the atoms to different That's materials and became Mount Gurnar. This fuck, this right here. I was, when I fucking, I was so happy. I got this Google Earth picture. I was like, maybe I can turn this on its side and rotate it. Oh my God, when it worked. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yes, it looks so cool. And the fucking lightning strike down the middle and 
kind of moved it around spiraling energy transforming the atoms to different materials and became Mount Gurnar. The path of the storm appearing even to orbit the location, calling forth the burst of positive energy vortices to create the mountain. This can be determined from the pole of Saturn, where a hexagon is formed in the planet's rotating atmosphere. Not only is Mount Gurnar encompassed by a hexagon, but is made up of many hexagonal formations. Also known as Revata Giri. I'm pause Reva because I want to mention this. This is called an oh, a Shiv Ling, a Shiva Lingam. Fucking huge, right? This one. And what's crazy, I don't, it's hard to find good pictures to see this thing close up. I would love to see this thing close up. I have yet to find a good picture of it close up. Because it kind of looks constructed as is, but this could be like layers. Because the thing is, the Shiva Ling here is said to have emerged of its own divine intention at the base of Mount Gurnar. this fucking thing this is said to have emerged of its own divine intention could you imagine whenever like after this fucking occurred you stumble on Mount Gurnar and it just has all of the most fucking and like it, it literally even has a projection of a lingam physically there on on location just hanging out you walk up you're like this is a holy spot no fucking question no question this is a holy spot this shit just emerged from the ground walk up on this thing like where the fuck did that come from what in the fuck that is holy like as soon as you see it you're like that's fucking crazy it's anomalous believe in god and fucking boom holy it's divine divinely intended to emerge if not caused by human man's construction but just fucking emerge just like the entire mountain Ata having the root Sanskrit meaning of brilliant and giri of mountain, as well as Yujayanta giri, where Yujayanta means temple in Sanskrit. If we inspect the Deccan traps more closely, okay, okay, where Yujayanta means temple in Sanskrit. If we inspect the Deccan traps more closely, they do not really look traditionally volcanic at all. The nearest hotspot under Réunion, claimed to be the cause of the Deccan Traps, is disputed on whether there is any relationship between the two at all. Very quickly, I go over this. That's the thing is, I'm just, I'm just like tapping, just tapping topics. Like this can be thoroughly investigated. You can Google the mantle plume of deck and traps uh, of reunion and its relationship to deck and traps and see people trying to tie the two together and see people saying they don't appear to have any relationship besides just that it appears that way 
Right. Instead, they have similar hexagonal feet. This is this is right here. Oh my god. Column, 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 column. Fucking so. Ugh. I think I talked about this in the first reaction, probably. But the columns with the like layers on top, so it's. Ugh. I've never seen this in my life. People would just say erosion. They'll be like, oh, erosion. So erosion creates side layers like this. Interlaced with columns up and down. No. Don't. Y'all don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Mr. Erosion to explain everything. Nah. That's not how it goes, dudes. That's what they do. They say erosion and time. Erosion time. Erosion time. That's just a hand wave. Erosion time. Erosion plus time equals earth. I... Is that what you went to school for? To say erosion time hand wave over every fucking anomaly? <sighs> it's mindless. Cheers. And are of the same nature. We think the model we believe is valid. But of a lesser magnitude. It is as if all of the deck and traps. Or the galactic disc. And then we got support of the world. It's, it's really easy when the entire world's like, yeah, that's right. You don't have to think about it. They agreed. I don't have to think about it. They agreed. Easy for me because they already thought about it. <laughs> Oops. Because they were fucking wrong. And until someone thinks about it, we're all going to keep propagating the falsehoods and then the appearance of the falsehoods being valid because of the propagation thereof and especially across time by many people like the sheer quantity of people propagating the false interpretations it appears as if we fucking found the truth and so no one thinks about it even though way back in our thought patterns there are mistakes that literally reshape everything it's like jenga oh, oh did you mess up all the way down here guess what the whole fucking thing topples because uh that's how it goes in science sorry dudes remember how you guys were the ones that were open and open-minded and willing to consider alternative viewpoints because you're scientists and religious people were the ones who were closed-minded and uh Others who don't, who aren't scientists, or aren't as rigorous of thinkers. Yeah, well, uh, things change sometimes, and uh, <laughs> like uh, of the galaxy having Mount Gurnar as the nucleus, and so they carry a frozen imprint of the current that was flowing through the region, like a current in the ocean. Incredible, though. The hexagonal. Like the deck and traps look like this. They don't look like a volcano. They look like fucking this. Just with stone. <laughs> and so they carry a... Like right here. Oh my god. Is that, is that a little heart too? There's a little heart. <laughs> the, just the way it's shaped here is so distinctly... Frozen imprint. Of the current I really need to investigate. I mean, I'm just Googling, so I don't really... I can only go by what I see on Google. This is a huge region, obviously. I mean, the square kilometers of this region is immense. So, like, what I say can be checked pretty regularly and easily by just fucking looking at the deck and traps, looking at Mount Gurnar. Like, there's, there's a ways to validate or invalidate what I have to say that was flowing through the silence is not a way <laughs> silence just makes me say yep I'm fucking right and you know it and you just don't want to admit it because you realize and then people just start thinking they don't say anything they just go about their lives and every now and then my arguments pop up in their line of reasoning and their thoughts because they can't help 
but realize that there is an alternative viewpoint and they're seeing connections that are, from what I say, to the things that they're interacting with on the day to day and then like but they don't fucking announce to the world that the theory of everything is found because they don't want to be the ones responsible <sighs> where I just have to be I didn't fucking ask for this either dudes region like a current in the ocean the hexagonal connections of the event are also present along the coast of South America and in the Hawaiian island chain in the ocean. The hexagonal connections of the event are also present along the end here. If we look at this angle right here over this way, it's 120 degrees. Let me see if I can find a map. This here. This is towards Easter Island. I believe. I think Easter Island's around here. Let me see. Yeah. I believe that this is Mount Grenar. Yeah. It is Mount Grenar's antipode was here. And then as the earth expanded, it was literally projecting through the planet, pushing up on the crust, creating basically these regions of elevated terrain that then, pause, okay, that then abruptly change. And this is again, let's see, protractor. This is kind of how I did it. Oh my god, my father. <sighs> yeah, it's a pretty much a hundred thereabouts, you know. A little tricky here because it's hard to put an exact. Like I could, I could cheat. Be like, oh, look at that. 120, bam, see. Like that, I mean, it really does look like 120, honestly. If I put it along this side here and along this, I mean, it's pretty damn close. Though. So, like, that this happened and that this happened is because the, as the earth expanded, like, it, bump, it bumped. That kind of like how the energy flows here are not in straight lines. Like, as the Earth expanded, it, like, bumps and causes a shift in the entire direction of expansion. So it was more this way than it was this way. And now we have Easter Island. Because that's, like, where it ended. Like, initially, the Earth was expanding rapidly. So there was almost nothing able to be formed here because the antipode moved. But then as it stabilized, it was able to push up more materials to a point where we have seamounts. And then at some point, the Earth stopped expanding as much. And then it was just the antipode and maybe that's why Easter Island is actually above the water because it was most energy being focused on it because the antipode stopped moving like as it's moving it's and so kind of over here maybe a similar occurrence where this was a, an antipode to a location uh which then was pushing through the earth, the flow of energy that was then pressing on this soft, still, st basically still malleable surface of the earth when the ocean floor was being deposited because it wasn't solidified fully yet. So it's pushing on this, creating elevation. And then again, the earth shifts and again, the elevation 
being called shifts in this direction until finally we reach a point where the Earth slows down its expansion enough that the antipode is able to flow enough energy into the islands to push them up. And so that's why the Hawaiian island chains are above water is because the earth slowed in, in its expansion process and the antipodal position, which I believe, if I remember right, was somewhere around here, actually. I'm pretty sure it's like right here. Interesting. Like it's by this fucking weird feature. Like right here, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Hawaii upside down. Yeah, here's the main island. Here's the islands. And then whatever the fuck this is. Like, what is this? It's kind of weird, right? There's just this, like, single strand that suddenly widens. And then it starts just fucking fingering out in all these directions. It's, it's kind of weird. Suggestive that there might be something more to this region than meets the eye. In terms of like... Like mass. Like a... Like another node. Like maybe there's a node here. And that's why this like flow of energy is like this here. Although there's no signs of a node, which is kind of odd. Like in the actual location of the antipode. But this is generally like Graton. Africa. Ew, it's between the Kratons. I'm not sure. That's why I didn't say anything in the video because I'm not really sure what's going on with this. Like I've, I do believe because of the 120 degree angle shift here, as well as, as here, as well as that this ruptured in 120 degrees, like all of this tied to the Earth expansion process and how the Earth expanded. So like something's causing this, and the fact that Easter Island is the antipode-ish of Mount Gurnar, and this whole situation is generally antipodal to what was going on in the deck and traps, suggests to me that this was caused by a flow through the Earth, press, pressing outward on the planet. And so therefore, so too was the Hawaiian Islands, even though I don't have something to reference here explicitly to be causing it. Uh, so it's maybe a little suspect. There's other features that are like, here's an island chain right here. Let's just kind of get pooped out of this corner. Another this island chain, that island chain, like the fact that they're coming out, this is out of a corner, makes it a little anomalous too, so I'm not sure, I'm just not sure, but uh, yeah, let me carry on, coast of South America and in the Hawaiian island chain, this indicates that the earth has larger systems as part of its constituents which are nodes of the platonic solid coordinate and the electrons. I didn't mention that. Like, this is electron, 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 electron. I'm sure that's how they work. The R coordinates, like Mount Gurnar, 
on a planet that are in specific points like Chicxulub where there is a particle that makes up the node system of the earth when the earth ruptured Mount Gurnar and Chicxulub were antipodal Chicxulub was positioned off the western coast of South America by looking at present coordinates we find a pattern emerges the approximate coordinate I don't like this I, it's hard to do anything with ley lines uh, image wise because they all are just kind of guessing like Giza that one's obvious that one's Colin Mount Shasta those two I see a lot of Azores that makes sense but like they just they're just guessing so like this image I don't believe that this grids that it put like it, it has no reference to Mount Grenar or to Chicxulub and without recognizing them I feel like those are like the way in to finding the actual grid coordinates without finding actual grid coordinates we're just kind of guessing like that one's significant Mount Chasta that one's significant Giza like there's Stonehenge maybe Stonehenge is right there you know like they, they but it's not because of like geological understanding oh yeah the the earth has electrons that make up points that are at a grid like location which therefore are here 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 literally all of them boom and that's why and the end like that doesn't happen this this is this whole region is kind of void of of rigorous science in the same way I mean, it's just it's so far away it's kind of like magic like it's hard for us to even combine the things without reaching that stage of understanding to scientifically to like catch up to the concept of ley lines to even begin to like rigorously apply absolute certainty to it and there's so much to it because we're assuming like we don't realize the earth expanded not accounting for that like Giza, according to us, was here. It was not here, though. It just wasn't at that coordinate when it was built. So, we're a little confused. And it's of the following locations are Mount Gurnar, 21.5 degrees north, 70.5 degrees east. Chicxulub. I don't like that I didn't just read the numbers, my bad. I was trying to make them a little closer. 21.5, 21.5, 21.5. Dude, it says 27. <laughs> 21.5 degrees, degrees cool. north, 90 degrees west. The south. This one's reasonable. Um, ish. Like, it really probably would have been better, like, right there. The coordinates aren't quite. This is it. Literally the same coordinates as Mount Grenard is opposite, which I find interesting. That's kind of what I was aiming, is to try to get Mount Grenard coordinates here. That's why the numbers are there, and I didn't actually choose there to really see where the same coordinates were. And it really is right the fuck, which is interesting that it's the same numbers, but it's not an antipode. It was the antipode, but now it's not. That's so interesting to me. The American hexagonal corner, 21.5 degrees south, 70.5 degrees west. Mount Gurnar's current antipode, Easter Island, 23.9 degrees south, 109 degrees west. Eye of Sahara, 21.1 degrees north, 11.4 degrees east. This shows us that when the resonance of a system is... Uh, oops. I paused the wrong thing. I paused the recording and not the video. <laughs> 0. 0.4 degrees east. This shows us that... What I was going to say is I fucking hate my tone of voice here. When the resonance of a system no is changed, sense. it can pass through a transitional chaotic phase to reach a new equilibrium. 
This shows that the Earth underwent a similar process. That's fucking true, though. Where its resonance was changed. <clears throat> I put too much of this shit in here. This repeating value of 21.5 degrees. This I find interesting. Mecca is also... And then, what are the odds that Mount Granor is at this fucking coordinate, pretty much? That's pretty crazy. And Jixalub. Wait, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Has been associated with the golden ratio. It's not like I chose these locations. Like, okay, I gotta find places on Earth that all have the same coordinates and things. <laughs> Subtleties that point to this being more likely to be the case. Like, this is just shit that's the outcome of discovering the truth. That's what happens. This shit starts to align. And it just is like that. And that's why it's verifiable. Because it starts to align. See some new shit like, oh wow. That actually validates. There comes a point where it, like, it just validates. And it doesn't even rebut. It, like Encountering new information tends to be more likely to be explainable across time with this model, which is kind of surprising. Like, considering what the model is, like, it's certainly surprising. No model should be able to explain what I've explained in terms of linking. Like, I, like if you took a, a bracelet and took, put every observation I've combined into one thread on that bracelet. It's a fucking big ass bracelet. This is a lot of things taken into account and considered across a large spectrum of observations where like people talking about Earth don't fucking talk about physics really. They don't talk about all these other things that I'm drawing from. <laughs> so when like then I uh, in my research, see something new. Like it didn't, this did not have to align. Mount Gurnar could have been at 27 or something. Like it could have just been randomly some location that wasn't so glaringly like anomalous. Point of the earth, which has been claimed to be Mecca. Just everything about this mountain is anomalous. <laughs> Mecca too has coordinates of 21.5 degrees north. And 39.8 degrees, 21.4, like I should, I mean, I said two, I'm, I'm approximating, I'm, I'm kind of hoping people understand, I'm approximating, and don't fucking lash out at me, that's what's going on, like if I was a, a fucking teacher in a college class, just teaching this stuff, and the same identical words were used, no one would fucking lash out at me for saying 21.5 when it's 21.4, but because I am not in those circumstances, every single fucking detail that someone can pick up on and try to shove some disproof into my, like, line of reasoning to sever it, like, they're, they just do. They try their fucking best. Like, dude, why don't you do that to your own model? Because you believe it. You don't fucking rigorously test it like that. Guess what I do to my own model. That's why I fucking arrived at this. Because I don't just accept truth as truth. I fucking make sure it's truth and not just someone else's truth. It's east. Approximately at Mount Gurnar's present antipode. As if the cosmic energies that were... I find this interesting. The mountain itself has shapes. Like there's shapes going on. Channeled, focusedly, th <clears throat> not just here, but like Tahiti, Fiji. Oh my God, Fiji and Tahiti. Let's see. Like this, Fiji. They really don't want me taking labels off shit. So f there's a, it's basically, this is real interesting. I think this is from the water, but the, 
in terms of rain over here. But I think the there is a um I was looking into this, there's a divide. As if this this island, so if we zoom out, is a result of a collision of of energies, like two waves colliding and then spiraling around one another and creating literally a, a, a island made of different materials to a point where it also has arms like a galaxy <coughs> flowing off of it. And then Tahiti. Where's Tahiti? Let's find Tahiti. I'm not sure. I think it might be there. Oh. I, Tahiti I find real interesting. So this is a, a similar island like the like Mount or the Easter Island in terms of its like triangular shape, which I find interesting. But then here is like a teardrop shaped island and then Tahiti itself though. Oh my god, the fucking labels. Stop labeling shit, guys. The island itself has a sort of like square at the center. It is itself a square. And then it has like distinctly flows in four directions off of that square. Where they're like all in this way, all in this way, this way, this way, to a point where it's like, <coughs> basically, this, and this is Tahiti's directly above the Pacific Superplume. So I believe that when Tahiti was formed, which also is around a million years old, according to radiometric dating, which puts it at the same time frame of formation as Mount Gurnar, and Easter Island, which are generally formed around a million years ago. Easter Island, a little more recent, like 700,000, I think. According to radiometric dating, this all occurred in reality when the Earth expanded thousands of years ago when ancient Tuarka was attacked, but still, this was at the end of the process. So like near the end of the Earth expansion process, the TED was formed. And it seems like it's like an upwell of energy that then f meets the downflow of energy from the cosmos and collides and then just basically goes out in four directions for some reason. Kind of like magnetic fields colliding, repelling, and just like going out in this direction then. So I think there's something up here. Tahiti's real interesting too. That's that's strange. What the fuck? What in the what's going on there? I don't know what that's about. Is that clouds? That's clouds. This is a cool island. Okay. Through the mountain and down into the center of the earth and out the other side were so strong as to push up islands on the surface. Remote I didn't quite say that right. It's a little confusing. What I was trying to say is when Mount Gurnar was formed, it basically allowed a channel of energy from the cosmos to flow through Mount Gurnar down into the planet and out the other side. So it wasn't necessarily... I'm not quite sure. Like it's probably because the process was occurring, so like it was projecting energy to create Mount Gurnar, which then kind of pushed like backward, like a jet, in order to cause forward motion of the mountain in one direction. A jet occurred in the opposite direction that then pushed up this island. Islands of Rapa Nui are found. On the island are Moai statues. Chus. Some stand in lines, casting shadows that appear as waves, depicting the waves of energy that the Earth. This is what I think happened: is the Earth 
fucking exploded. So it began with a first explosion and then it kind of reduced in energy. And then this is when Chicxulub happened. So this is like when ancient Dwarka is attacked. Ancient Dwarka is attacked and then suddenly the earth starts fracturing and releasing shit. And the crack uh, kind of subsides until the actual expansion of the earth occurred and then there was a second wave when Chicxulub exploded and all the severings that needed to happen happened so that the the crust was able to just uniformly expand and fill in the regions between them and so then it was kind of like a ripples like they're not the same elevation but they're kind of in in like a gentle wave formation I know this stuff is said to have been like not in this place when the people who did it put it there so like this is all after the fact so it's hard to say where the original people did this and how they intended it to be if this is how it was but Regardless, I do believe it It physically shows the energy released first. And this one's got a red hat, like the hat thing on it's red. As it like fire, like fucking magma, fire, lava released from the earth. And then this one I believe is white, which maybe is more towards like water, for some reason white. Clouds, I don't know. It's released. Others showing our descent into darkness. In the same story here. Others showing our descent into darkness. But are you sure? Because these statues were not necessarily arranged like this. Because this to me, tall, full, single head. So like... This is a stable individual. Mentally, bodily. Just <clears throat> like that's what it's depicting. But then the then their head they start to lose their minds. They lose half of their minds. <clears throat> as they grow though, like it gets bigger. So as this being gets bigger, they lose half of their minds. And then they start to fall to a point where they just are in utter ignorance. They don't have any conscious awareness anymore. It's like a... <clears throat> so that's kind of how I feel. Like our society was stable. And then we started to lose our fucking minds as we grew. Kind of like a explosion. Like a supernova. Like our whole society supernova. Probably. In some like metaphorical but real way. <clears throat> and collapsed and then we started to realize oh yeah that's right <laughs> but then we fucking lost our minds because uh, flood happens and uh, all the information's lost because it's time we're fucking we're being crazy half insane as a people lost our minds and so we gotta start over in ignorance yes from awareness <coughs> to ignorance. Whether or not they actually were depicting these things, you know, I casually suggest that they were. Uh, it's hard to say, but... Yet all waves oscillate. The storm, upon discharging into the earth, was ejected as a more stable system from the surface of the planet. However, it appears to have remained as a stable ethereal vacuum particle orbiting the earth as the South Atlantic anomaly. As it moves westward, I'm not complete. I'm, uh, the reason I'm pretty sure about this is because the South Atlantic anomaly is considered to be moving towards the the magnetic pole opposite to <coughs> where the poles are moving. It is moving <coughs> to an antipodal position to where the magnetic poles appear to be converging. This demonstrates that the process because of... Because it's moving towards the antipode of this whole process, it strongly suggests to me that the South Atlantic anomaly 
is um, the fucking system from the storm, literally. Pole shift involves an emergence of a new pole and a convergence of the present poles as one. While the South Atlantic anomaly will become one of the poles, the con importantly, also, these are not antipodes, which is another reason, I believe, when, like, the pole moves here, and the, these, these two poles are converging over here. He, this is from Suspicious Observers, I think I linked it, and he believes they're moving here, and whoever else is saying this is saying, for whatever reason, they're saying here. But this is just kind of an assumption for various reasons, probably because it's an antipode to something over here. But it's in the middle of the ocean. I mean, are we sure about this? This doesn't really make any actual sense. Maybe over here, where the gravitational anomaly is. Like... Uh, This here, like it would make more sense down at the tip of that India, down here than over here. But I don't like think either of them. I think it's actually it's moving to Mount Gurnar, and then Mount Gurnar is going to be one pole, while the South Atlantic anomaly is going to be the other pole. But they're not going to be antipodal. They're going to be offset, like they're not 180 degrees apart and so what happens is the, the earth has like a flow of the magnetic field offset in the earth and this I mean it probably is gonna fucking explode it's gonna explode material until the poles are actually opposite. Like, it's not going to be stable with a pole here and a pole at Mount Kurnar. Not stable. Because it's not like 180 degrees opposite. So they're going to prefer that something changes. And lots of loud noises. Okay, I'll just keep going, whatever. Um, they're going to prefer that something changes, though, I was saying. Like they, the poles don't want to be not opposite. So they're going to try to push the world to a steady state where the poles are opposite, which means they need to physically reshape the crust of the planet because they're not going to be elsewhere. Like, this is the optimal location for the pole and the location where the earth ruptured is the optimal location for the antipode pole but they're not antipodes <laughs> so <laughs> the earth will compensate by correcting once like the poles merge the north and south poles of our planet merge at Mount Gurnar and truly become a new magnetic field, it's going to cause the Earth to be imbalanced. And that's probably how Mars happens, honestly, is uh, the Earth itself is not balanced when its magnetic field is not actually opposite. So it'll just like adjust it back towards a more balanced state by literally like a ground state of the electron by shedding crust some mechanism to just shed crust and make the more stable continental crust like reconverge without the ocean surface again to a point where maybe it even loses continental shelf and stuff too so it looks it's what looks like it's fucking Mars because it has to lose these things to similarly be like Mars. Whether or not it's identical to Mars, I don't know. But it's going to go through a process like Mars went through. Convergence of our present poles. 
will occur at the counter location on the planet, at the location where a vortex of positive energy was emitted, providing a channel for the positive energy outflow to vent from the earth. Mount Gurnar. And positive energy outflow. I put a bunch of hearts coming up. If you think about it, hearts are pretty much uh, like half of a magnetic field. And so like there's a positive flow is going to be like a heart. A negative flow is going to be like a downward heart. Like a sad face heart. <laughs> Opposite heart. And so like when the two converge and meet, they become like a magnetic field. They don't look like a heart anymore. But when they're by themselves, they just look like hearts. To a point where like a heart is just positive. It's like a positive thing going on by that shape. It's like the positive node only is the heart shape. And as Dwarka was the gateway to heaven, Mount Gurnar is the mountain from heaven. Mount Hello. Gurnar, the heaven. Mount Gurnar is the mountain from heaven. So one, one, one on the, on the, that circle that I was spinning. This lake is positioned at one. This is nine, nine, one, one. This is a good picture. That's why I stopped. This is one. This is an eight. So over here is eight, but here's one. So even though this is a lake at eight, it's fed by the one. A one, a one. This is along the one. This is along the one. It's kind of a convergence. This one and this one are convergences, including one. The lines of one, they're not quite exactly. This one's more one. This one's more like a many, like four, six, and one, I think. Three numbers that could be argued to be associated with this lake. But this one's distinctly at a one. This one's distinctly at a one. This is distinctly a one that feeds into an eight. I don't think it's an accident. That's why I'm saying it. Like it's a low point in the region caused naturally by the vortex of creating one there, one there, one here, uh, one over here, one over here, which are just leading to natural tendencies in the elevation of the region that make these the locations where water is most likely to be found. And then over here, there's another nine but it, where all the people are. So maybe it's kind of more like a zero I've considered. I'm not sure. And, and just that right there even. Like the fact, if I if we look at it from this angle, like the whole of the mountain doesn't have hexagons distinctly. Like they're they're obvious, but they're not distinct like this. Work sides was the gateway to have over on the other four sides. They're not as distinct, but what is distinct is actually like a like a fucking heart, like yeah. a heart. Mount yeah, Gurnar. Heart. Is the mountain from really a heart as distinct? Heaven. Mount Gurnar, the mountain of temples, which is home to the yearly Lily Parakrama, has more secrets written. Mount Gurnar, the temple of the mountain of temples. I don't think I could be more obvious, guys. <coughs> In its stone. It has been suggested as the location of Mount Gerizim. In Samaritan belief, Mount Gerizim is considered to be the location of Temple Mount as chosen by Yahweh. In Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist cosmology, Mount Miru is the sacred five-peaked mountain considered to be the center of the physical, metaphysical, and spiritual universes. It is said that Mount Miru is heard to be at the center of the earth, but is not seen there. Understand, I never even heard of Mount Miru until after 
I started making the Mount Grenard video. Like, this is shit I stumbled on. <laughs> like, oh. Wait, Mount Nehru. Heard it to be a... Th like, what in the fuck, dude? It doesn't have to be that way. Not only heard to be at the center of the earth, but it's not seen there. We can't find it. We thought it was there, but it, where'd it go? Where did it go? Upon the attack of Dwarka, Mount Gurnar was emitted from the center of the earth. Lord Neman fact. Natha, the 22nd Tirthankara, is said to have obtained Nirvana on the 5th peak of Mount Gurnar. 5th peak, Mount Meru, 5th peaked mountain. Like the earth's phi ratio growth, so too... In fucking incredible. Does Mount Gurnar have features showing its growth in this... This is incredible, dudes. I can't say enough how incredible this is. Banner. Here we can see the three-dimensional increase in the curvature as the nucleus of the peak is approached. Mount Gurnar is not alone. Sitting to the southwest of Mount Gurnar is a second elevated region. As we can see in the terrain, the region is separated along a fracture line between the central nucleus of Mount Gurnar and the adjacent system. Within the terrain of Mount Gurnar, we can see the energy flow produced a second separate system that divided from the nucleus of the mountain. The elevation in the terrain as shown by topography indicates the flow of energy from the center had sufficiently propagated and the system severed away. I'm not sure if this is exactly applicable. <laughs> I just wanted to include it because optical vortices are fucking awesome. I'm pretty sure it's applicable, but I, I mean, they're so awesome that it, like just the fact that it's similar was enough for me to be like, yeah. From its energetic source, like the cutting of an umbilical cord, the existence of ancient Dwarka is strongly supported by the evidence provided by Mount Gurnar. More, its clear and exact location in the bathymetric data shows that it is squarely in the center of the conflict between India and Pakistan. Separating violently in 1947 after the departure of the colonization of the British Empire, who had occupied the region for two centuries, the two countries were established according to religion by the British government. Occurring over a period of a year, the Islamic population was moved to Pakistan and eastern Pakistan, which would become Bangladesh, while the Hindu population was moved to India. With over a million dead in the wake, people killing on sight based on religious determinants, the division with over... Okay, real quick. The way I kind of look at it. Is this is like one land, right? And everyone here was living peacefully together. And then the British government, whose arm, who physically appendage, this was an appendage of the British colonization. Their arm is in the region, pulling shit out, taking resources, you know. Uh, but they can't, like, deal with it because this happened in 1947 which is when they decided we would rather invest those resources, use this appendage instead in Israel. So they left India, took the appendage out of India, and said, you know, while we're at it, we're going to divide you. Indians over here, or Hindus over here, Pakistanis, Muslims over here. We'll call it Pakistan and India and Bangladesh. So Muslims, Muslims, Hindus, good. We'll divide you guys. And so they just they pull their appendage out. And if you um, can picture just like an arm moving through water and the, the eddies of currents 
that they produce by pulling their fucking appendage out is what happens. Is they're literally taking their appendage out and creating a fucking current that then is tumultuous because they took their fucking greedy ass fingers out of the situation and <laughs> took their resources elsewhere to go basically impose a prophecy fulfillment uh, by tyrannical leaders that don't know what the fuck they're doing For a million dead in the wake people killing on site based on religious determinants the division plunged the region into conflict as the comes back to the part where zero longitude is fucking Greenwich, England. Like, it's kind of weird it's in England. And England decided zero longitude. Like, wait, guys. Did someone there know that that was, like, the actual technical location of zero longitude? And they wanted, like, it was important that the zero longitude... It wasn't some fucking imperialist, like ego of England it was literally someone fucking knew that was the technical zero point was in Africa and they knew that England was the perfect excuse for it and like they just kind of pushed England to being the one to proclaim the zero degrees at their own like coordinate system because they're imperialists ruling the world like, even though, like, it was actually important, we needed to make sure it was at zero degrees latitude and be right. Like, longitude. For some reason, it's not just uh, arbitrary. Because it's really kind of arbitrary at first glance. But there may be subtleties that make it less arbitrary and more about, like, energy flows on the in the grid of the earth like subtle nuances that matter to someone who's like controlling the world to a point where they're like okay we need a zero degree of the of longitude to be at zero longitude we can't just fucking pretend so they came up with a reason that wasn't obvious they weren't like okay we gotta tell the world that the zero longitude point is in Africa at this location. We gotta fucking draw a line. Find what goes through. Okay, perfect spot is England. <laughs> Their fucking England ways all fucking who's an astronomer. I mean, it really seems organically to have happened though, which makes me say it wasn't even like a individual in this world that did it. It was truly God. Like, Okay, you guys need to have the right longitude. Cultures had peacefully lived with one another prior. Tensions rose over which country had claim of which regions. There was no way to peacefully separate people from their physical roots. That concept's really important that we that we have physical roots. Like you can't just shove someone out of their land because they're like. Even though we're a human being who has no, like, roots, like a plant has roots, like, we're still rooted physically to a location because that's where we fucking grew up, that's where all our shit is, that's all the things going on in our lives, like, to just casually be like, now go over there, like... If someone's a wanderer, then they're not rooted, so then they can flow with the tides and flow with the winds and move. But, like, if someone is actually stationarily rooted, then their energy will begin to root into their physical location in a way where if someone comes along and just tries to move them, they're like, fuck you. They're going to have resistance because they're rooted. As a result, nuclear-armed Pakistan and India remained in conflict. More, Pakistan is on the brink of economic collapse, having water and food shortages, but limited resources to trade with a world based on modern methods of exchange. India 
of Hindu population is likely to desire just, all controls over. And he's subtly trying to be like, dude, don't fight. When I tell you about where Dwarka is, please don't fight. <laughs> Any excavations and research in the location of ancient Dwarka. And so it is no accident, but the will of God, which places it squarely at the conflict between the... Con That's what I mean. Will of God, like it may just be that zero longitude was the will of God to be actually at zero longitude because it was important for some reason, and it was it was able to be hidden until now when we start to realize there to be these grids and there to be a specific ones that are like the main zero zero one in Africa is like the. actual grid point to base things off of like we wouldn't even notice we're, just, we're too oblivious to notice that someone's directing things like that countries as all border disputes prior have large that's someone being god largely flared in the regions of Kashmir and Punjab the vortex influenced the land so as to create I'm not sure about this honestly this was there's a lot of little things i say around this region that i didn't even look like uh to see what is currently explained is it like how did the marshlands get formed here what do people say about these marshlands eight an uninhabitable mark kind of uh, like what about here why is this not marshlands Marshlands along the nearest coastline by ancient Dwarka. The Sir Creek dispute between the countries is regarding where the border is drawn through the marshlands. Generally, international borders are drawn down the middle of bodies of water between countries, but the marshlands in the region are fluid and Sir Creek meanders across time. Pakistan has held the position that the border should be drawn on India's side of Sir Creek, while India has held the center line of the creek as where they feel appropriate. Notably, Pakistan has very little access to water I have said that part. relative to the country this is not really fair. This is not reasonable. of India. Neither country is aware of the presence. We just gotta share. That's really the key. I'm just trying to say, yo, don't try to fucking hog everything, India. Since of Dwarka in the disputed waters, as time has brought the perception of the culture's physical location further southward. It's kind of like all the religions, though. Like, we're all one people. We're one people. But like. Israel doesn't see that. <laughs> you know, everyone's divided in religions. Muslims, there's Christians, there's Hindus, Jews. And each each like philosophy has the the buildings they deem important and like so like the Al Aqsa Mosque for inst instance. I mean that one's a little complicated because it's on what is believed to be Temple Mount. Or where Temple Mounts will be built. Uh, but I'm not so convinced that it's even in the right location. So there's a lot of complications. But like, even if it is, like, if, if it is a holy site for one religion, it doesn't fucking... It doesn't prevent anyone else from having equal say to being in the location and what's going on there like it's just biased oh it's my my team's turn to like hog the resource <laughs> and tell everyone that it's not ours and not theirs because we're the the ones who believe the thing surrounding the thing even though it's all connected and so it's actually all part of one belief system and truth one reality and truth and so to like limit one another is actually not to acknowledge e each other's equal rights to these things. Uh, just because we've decided we're members of a team 
that has claimed stake to certain things doesn't mean that team actually has a say over those things. I mean, it's really all of ours at the end of the day. We're all Jews. We're all everything. All this bullshit of chosen people and all this stuff. It's like, uh, are you guys sure they're not chosen for, like, fucking inserting World War Three and destroying the world? That seems to be what's going on here. If you look at Israel, like, it's fucking starting wars. It's literally going to start World War Three, and it doesn't give a fuck. It just bombs relentlessly. And oh searching for Dwarka is limited. That shit ain't God prevails. That's just an arrogant ass bullshit man trying to prevail. Pfft. Building walls, killing people, stealing their lands. Acting like that's fucking holy. Oh, it's our land. Oh my god, the fucking... Let's see if I can find it. Settlers Israel. Let's just go on Twitter. Maybe we can find some video. I'm just dancing after burning all the trees. Oh, good. That's not the video I was looking for. What happens is the settlers think, oh, we're they start to have numbers and then they're dogpiling. So this is a dogpile. Bunch of bitches, really. They're being bitches. The settlers, they come in and they just literally just fucking drop off one another on a bus. And they're all a bunch of unprepared for fighting or violence people. So to attack them would be just, you know, just fucking unfair for them. Like, they'd be fucked. But, like, they're kind of, like, asking for it the more they fucking do, like, I don't know, bus, 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 West Bank. Oh, my God. Run over by a vehicle, Israeli settlers. Oh, cool. Not finding the video I was looking for though. They basically drop off a bunch of fucking people who then sneak in at the right time on the and settle the territory and then like <sighs> they don't know they're being fucking shipped in from like anywhere. They're they're literally like anyone wanna fucking come here? As long as, as long as you're a Jew, according to what a Jew is, let's see, what does Jew mean? Define word Jew. Jewish people. One whose religion is Judaism. That's not what the word fucking means. It's literally not what the word actually means. point is, it's kind of bullshit. It's just a fucking word. And we say, okay, people, if if you're willing to bring your body over here and be a fucking, you know, a, a Karen, went, a fat settler, <laughs> walking up, <laughs> fucking no fucks to give, sandals, like fucking t-shirts, shorts, like a sip in the straw. <laughs> Hey everyone, oh, I'm just gonna settle here because I'm a Jew and this is Israel. Literally mindless. Don't fucking realize you're walking in on people's homes who are like looking at you like, I could fucking kill you right now. And 
And they like they don't like that, so they fucking grin. They, they team up. Like, that's what they do. That's what's going on in the Holy Land, dudes. This is supposedly reflective of God. <laughs> it's reflective of God to just push people out of their land. That's America, and Iraq. Okay, yesterday sellers decided decided to build. So like, the, they're taking it upon themselves to act like the military, even. <laughs> what in the fuck is going on here? This might actually be a, an is uh, Israeli settler getting. In violence against settlers. That's surprising, honestly. <laughs> Some of these settlers are fucking despicable. I, I can't find their videos so quickly, but like literally like groups of people just like clearly like if someone were to get like Let's go then, motherfucker. If someone were to just like try to fucking uh, drop their clo their gloves, be like fucking let's go, then like fifty people, all waiting with like fucking pickaxe or some shit, ready to fucking jump them because they're Muslim and they're on their territory and they're supposed to get out of here and they're not really paying attention when we said get the fuck out of our land. Thing is, like sooner or later, sooner or later, Muslims are going to realize that the caliphate that they look for, the Islamic, the true Islamic state, as prophesied, not the bullshit that they try to fulfill prophecy for in front of our eyes to make us believe things, because they made the Islamic state as a result of there being prophecy of Islamic state. But the word Islam means submission. To the will of God. Muslim definition. Okay, so again, people, this is what happens. It's just like Jew, it loses sight of the fucking meaning. It's a, a follower of the religion of Islam. No. It doesn't fucking matter what you claim. You're not a fucking Muslim. If you're not a Muslim, which means submitter. To the will of God. It's not some follower of a religion. See how we're fucking confused. And we act like, oh, as long as you follow the religion. No. That's not what a submitter is. Either you're a fucking submitter to the will of God. Muslim. Or you're not. It doesn't fucking matter if you believe some bullshit someone's spewing to you. In fact, it's almost highly unlikely to be a Muslim while truly following the most like extreme beliefs like fucking Islamic State in terms of ISIS not just the Islamic State of Prophecy which will not be fucking filled with military members it's gonna be human beings being human beings families just people not weapons, love, love based, you know, trying to be like, yo, we're all one here. What the fuck are you doing? Why, why do you feel a need to attack us? What are you fucking doing? <laughs> That's what the Islamic State will be like. Not some fucking, not some psyop carried by MI6 and all their bullshit. CIA type agencies in this world and then pretending to be ISIS and then basically terrorizing the people of the Middle East to encourage their youth to join this movement and then drugging them and forcing them at gunpoint to go suicide bomb themselves and make sure that through the drugs they don't care if they live or die and they just fucking are prisoners to a lie that they were tricked into. Not that ISIS. 
Not that Islamic State, that is. Not that one. The true prophecy of Islamic State, which is a nation of submitters to the will of God. That's the Islamic State. This whole shit, though, that's what's going to happen is the, the Islamic State is going to form a prophesied one, the true Islamic State, which is for all people's best interests, because all, all, all things are connected. Not the, not the Islam only Islamic State where it's Islam versus everything else, like not that one. That's kind of like the Israel over here where it's Israel versus everyone else oh yeah israel no dude but like all the palestinians sooner or later like the when this shit goes down over here when this area is influxed with people joining the true islamic state like this shit is gonna get emptied out people won't care about israel like this anymore they'll be like you know what fuck you have your israel you fucking cunts have it peace and just walk away and leave it and go to the actual Islamic state where they will actually be able to function and move on and this and realize you know oh, it wasn't that important we got other shit to do now we see how we're behaving as one people then the, then the Israelis will be like what the fuck is going on here still come up with excuses to fucking behave like children oh we're gonna bomb you we're gonna bomb you we're gonna bomb you you guys are fucking pathetic it's sad to mostly near the modern city and while the border region within the dispute sorry just being honest <laughs> not talking about every citizen i'm talking about the way the fucking government functions it's little bitches it's like, oh, we got the name Israel. We named our country Israel, so we can do whatever we want. Israel here. Israel here. Everyone who's a Jew. World, please give us money. Aren't you a Jew supporter? You know the Holocaust happened, even though it was all fucking sham. Bullshit lie. There's so much nuance, guys. The details are not true. It's just like everything else. We don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We're telling some propagating lie because a liar lied. That's what happened. Someone, someone's decided we're going to fucking lie because it benefits us individually and we think this is the best thing to do. So we're just going to fucking lie to everyone. And yeah, we'll call it Israel. We gotta fulfill the prophecy. <laughs> is immaterial. The resulting we'll region. Shove all the Jews in there. Who cares what a Jew is? We'll just as long as they call themselves Jews, good enough. We'll just take everyone who's not calling themselves Jew. Get them out of there. You aren't calling yourself a Jew, are you? <laughs> you gotta get out of here, especially that skin tone of yours. You especially that skin tone. You don't. You don't seem to have the little curly hair things around you. You know, you really aren't meant to be here. This is the land of the Jews. Even though we've lost sight of what that even means. Of exclusive economic zone of seawaters is determined by the division. As a result, each country feels there is value in the region the Sir Creek dispute is mainly because of abundant fishing resources as, as it is considered to be one of the largest fishing grounds in Asia. Moreover, it is rich in hydrocarbons and shale gas. Isn't it crazy how these countries... India doesn't really care because it, it's confident that Dwarka was further south. So it's not really that concerned about this region it's really more concerned about the resources in the region it's not really it's not like you know i think dwarf is there we really should have that region it's like you know those fish look really useful and that that gas <laughs> never a 
realizing that because this dispute is happening, it's kind of like protecting Dwarka from being discovered because no one's really allowed to go in there. There's all this fighting. They don't really go there. They're like, all right, fine. We'll just leave it alone for now and get the resources later when shit's figured out. Maybe they're just kind of getting in there, but they got to be careful. So they try, like the fisheries are really not it's supposed to be venturing into this area. From what I understand, people are not allowed here. And, uh, you know, maybe it's God's will they're not allowed there because not just it's where the dispute because we decided to draw a line. <laughs> Again, Britain pulling its hand out, dividing it exactly on Dwarka. Like, is that an accident or is that intentional? At some point it starts to be like, do they just know what they're doing? <laughs> like, they know what they're ultimately doing and... Or they're just fucking retarded. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to say. I think it's both. Well, I think it's truly both. Resources. Just, out. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it really well, though. Because I'm an idiot, and I'm fucking retarded. So, you know, both are true. They are true. This and neither are willing to fully concede, nor to fully attack over the disputed territory as if divinely guided because it was not only is the location of ancient Dwarka in disputed territory but so too is Mount Gurnar when this the Brit incredible. British Empire left the region like all of India is in dispute it's really just like Right there, where Mount Gurnar is. <laughs> and then Dwarka. Like, what are the fucking odds that these two countries at the brink of World War Three commencing with nuclear armed capacity at each other's throats in some ways that are, like, peacefully coexisting with tension are gonna have two of the most major features on the Earth Unknowns to them, both in dispute. Discovered by someone who has for eight years called himself the Mahdi. <laughs> Inadvertently. It's not like I was like, okay, I got, as the Mahdi, I got all these things to do. And princes were given an opportunity to choose whether the 565 princely states would be part of India or Pakistan. While most princes chose according to their local dominant religion, the prince of Junagad chose according to his Muslim ancestors. So we can kind of get a, a picture. Not, not this picture. Let's keep going. Ancestors ...who had ruled the region. But the end result was accession of the region by India in November 1947. Since, in 2020... Pakistan has reiterated a claim to the territory. Thus, it is no accident that ancient Dwarka is located here. Not even what I was talking about. I was talking about Mount Gurnar. I just photo or uh, editing error. Literally, this was just misplaced in the sequence. Pretty much, I should have put it after talking about Mount about Dwarka. But in my video editing, as you can see, if you watch my other videos of the shorter versions than the full one, that uh, it's placed more reasonably. But then I added a bunch of shit around it and just kind of moved it over. But then I didn't realize, and I don't feel like changing it. I could I could go through this video again and really try to make it even better and actually try to fix audio spots that I don't like and just make it do it again <laughs> just do it again I could do it again but I I don't care like that I figure this reaction I mean this is gonna be like six hours almost is uh that's pretty good I can at least be like hey look at this <laughs> evidence what shows what I gonna say Oh yeah, this is how humans work, though. Where let's put the labels. Labels satellite. 
Pakistan. So Pakistan comes over here. La la la, la 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 comes through, comes through, comes through, and then and then comes over here. And this is where the dispute is. It's through Sir Creek in terms of how much of this is whose region. And then over here, Mount Gurnar. So as we can see, distinctly in India. Like this if India is this fucking huge region here, like that's big. That's big. And then there's little old Mount Gurnar and, and Junagad over here where it was as simple as it was not able to be defended. That's what happened is some overpowering forces took it. They just said, no, this is ours. I don't give a shit what you say. This is ours. And they took it. And Pakistan couldn't really do anything because it's over here. And that's how humans are. And, you know, it's kind of rude because, uh, it didn't honor the agreement. It, it was kind of like, well, you know, I know we said the princes would choose, but you realize, like, all oh, this is Hindu, so, like, we're going to take it for India. And so we're going to take this for India. Like, what are you talking about? Just no. Just no. No. So they just took it. Just said, no, we're taking it. Like, dude. You're not respecting the agreement. Now, now you're just asking to fight, but because they're strong-armed, they're able to. It's in their fucking territory. It's, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? you going to fight us over this? Come on. Come on. <laughs> so they took it, but now like, it's still a fucking... This is why we need to just remove the border. So this is what I say to you guys. Fuck the Brit. Fuck the British. Fuck what they say. You guys aren't fucking separate people. You are always one people. Be one people. Who cares about your religious division? Realize this. The, the discoverer of ancient Dwarka is the Mahdi. So. <laughs> Does that join your religions enough? Came to the territory... Thus, it is no accident that ancient Dwarka is located here. Evidence shows that we are all one, united, undivided. When we place this truth as the cornerstone of our perception of reality and struct like my tone of voice here is another spot. Sure, our collective and world structure our collective world around it good like i knew this all along oh you guys done like the moment i fucking know oh what we should be doing structure our collective world around it other me's that i'm not really appreciating or other me's duh We place this truth as the cornerstone of our perception of reality and structure our collective world around it, peace can come through understanding. It's not terrible, it's just it's so confrontational as a topic. And this is also, oh my god, the face. This whole time I'm talking about Mount Gurnar and then I turn it on its side. Literally, boom, face. And not only a face, but a face that at the third eye are just a clustering of temples, which I find fascinating. Like Clustering? A clustering of temples at the third eye.
this song or this randomly played with Waltz. I hope he's cool and I put it in here and never actually officially got your confirmation, Malt. I'm not even sure who plays what. I think I'm, uh... I think he's playing the long, the long notes. It's not bad. You can hear it. <laughs> at some point you can hear our, our voice in it. I didn't realize. Mom said something. Okay, so before I go listen to the next three minutes of that, so you can check that out on your own if you're interested. I like I did have the peace sign initially start. the cloud fades this took forever this fucking took forever dudes this right here through understanding thanks for watching that's why it's just thanks for watching <laughs> 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 and then a, a peace sign out of the cloud out of the storm cloud slowly starts to come was fully in and faded away. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm pretty much saying that after the storm comes a fading of peace. I'd rather after the storm. What I'm really saying is after the storm, when we fucking discuss the reality of the situation as people and acknowledge there to be more to reality than we claim and we deal with the ramifications of our fucking years of resistance to actual truths and allow truth to propagate into society, it's going to have a stormy fucking moment in time, a transitional period, I mean, but it's really not my or anyone else's fault who tries to bring peace that there will be a transitional fucking storm because, you know, people are greedy assholes who are basically stealing and lying and cheating and pulling society down and you know unfortunately people operate in good faith and trust in authority when they just have not come to realize to not trust the fucking authorities because they're not right even if they're honest even if they are behaving in a honest and good faith way someone up the chain is intentionally lying to them that's the problem is we got fucking intentional pathological liars telling intentional lies like if I were to say I'm 20 uh, yesterday I went to the sh to the store and I got this football and I hit someone in the face with it and I then I shot them in the nuts like, that's all lies. It's all utter falsehoods. They're not true. It's just made up shit. Yeah, someone's doing that, and we're believing them. And the reason they're doing that is because they're getting a benefit. Like, oh, this is nice. This is nice. When I'm in control of things and everyone's listening, and they're letting me control things and take all the energy from them, this is perfect as long as I continue to lie. And they just keep lying, and because we're fucking young, innocent, impressionable beings who just generally trust authority by our nature until we learn otherwise, then we, um, you know. Now it's kind of ironic. We're in a situation where new authority, <clears throat> like actual authority, someone who's like an authority on a topic is not allowed to emerge because we're afraid of authorities emerging because we've learned to not trust them, but we still trust the ones who are the reason we learn to not trust authorities. Like, what in the fuck are we doing? It's ridiculous. Okay, guys. Um, 
did I have anything else of interest? I hit the lingam. I hit the, the ponds around Mount Gurnar and they're the way they are. Like uh, those were some things. It's not really related to what I was talking about, but this this is another thing I find interesting. Like what in the fuck is this? You know, in a land where the the trident Like this is Trishula. In a land where this is a common symbol. It's kinda crazy this. It looks like a weapon was used here that scarred the earth. A trident weapon, not just a weapon, a trident weapon. And then over here, uh, India is filled with anomalies. Forget where it is. Like these features. Where are they? I'm going to pause while I find it. Okay. Okay. I found its name. I wanted to go. No, that's not it. Go Varden. Go Var. There it is. There it is. Okay, the reason I wanted to get on Google Maps is because I can <laughs> go like this. Go Vardana Hill. It's just this fucking... Okay. It's a straight line. It looks like a laser, like scar, scar tissue of the earth from some sort of laser. That's what it looks like to me. And uh, down here, it kind of tapers off. It's very straight. It's very straight. It's, it's very odd. Like, what in the fuck is this? And if you look at just like everything else where names have meaning that which increases the senses that which increases the senses I mean if a laser beam weapon scarred the earth in a straight line in a way that's like they won't be seen. We'll probably increase our senses to be aware of it. I think so. I think so. <laughs> I don't know. And there's more of these kind of weird features over here. They're just so straight. I'm not sure. These make it actually more likely that they're natural. And I'm not sure they're actually related. But the name coupled with the like singular thing over here by itself. Like it's very odd. It's very odd. Okay. So that's probably good on my so in in conclusion, I guess maybe. In conclusion. Of course everything I say is not absolute, so I need help figuring out what the fuck is true. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of it is generally true. I mean, obviously, I'm, I don't feel that way. But uh, I'm I'm also confident there's things I'm wrong about and like need adjustments and tweaking. That doesn't it doesn't mean I'm totally wrong though. Like, if if I was if the way I'm treated by people were to be how the standard model was treated by people, then 
we would literally have no model. But because we pretend like the model we biasly chose is uh, absolute, it's allowed to get all these like free passes. Oh, it doesn't explain that. That's okay, little one. We know you're doing your best. You'll explain that sooner or later. Me, I'm... Oh, you, you had a slightly... Like, flawed explanation that I can poke a hole in it means everything you said is wrong. I get to go on and pretend like I'm nowhere more than that dude. What a fucking idiot that dude was. Holy shit, he thought, what in the fuck? Where did he come up with this stupid shit? I don't think he even came up with it himself. He probably, probably just fucking read it in a book. I don't know, where's the book? I don't know. Show me where his evidence is, guys. It's all me. All my mind. You're welcome. Peace.